Hey guys, and welcome to Fortune Theory. So this is basically just our like first um, introductory kind of video. So I'm your host, Oliver, and our co-host is Patrick. How you doing? And <laughs> yes. <laughs> this was a very upbeat starting there. <laughs> And just, just as a little intro video, like really, um, we are going to talk about a film, but I just sort of like to just introduce what we're going to do. Basically, on this channel, we're going to talk about films, we're going to talk about TV shows, maybe even some games, um, just um, even documentaries, perhaps. And, you know, we'll decide that and go f further on with it. And in those videos, we're just going to like theorize what could have been um, done better maybe what's to come in the future, um, put our own take on alternative versions of what we would have done if we were the ones behind the realm of making those projects and basically all of those sorts of things. So the whole realm of everything to do with filmmaking, really, as we are filmmakers. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> yes, we studied um, creative media at both college and university. So <clears throat> we're... For one of us, anyway. We've got qualifications to do this. <laughs> qualifications we... to um... prove it. We now just got to get the public, yeah. get the rest of the world to know it. In, indeed. But, um, yeah, this is like a basic film review. Obviously, millions of people do this. So you've got a lot of choice if you're listening to this on Spotify or YouTube or iTunes, wherever you're listening to this, Apple Music, wherever. So you've got loads of people to listen to, but this is just two random people on the internet that decide to disclose their opinion and make like however long these are going to be in podcasts and videos to just talk about absolute rubbish to do with films. And if you don't like films, then what are you doing here? <laughs> but... And if you keep letting him talk, enjoy this being the video of your choice when you're going to bed. So oh, <laughs> let's, get to the, let's get to the point, shall we? So, yes, unfortunately, we will go be going back to him in a moment. Brilliant. Uh, but I'd just like to say that for this first video, um, we're going to be releasing them once a um, week. Ish. Once a week. You're yeah. like the, your uh, schedule right. Yeah. Decided, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I almost like lost my words there. Um, do forgive us. It is our first like video for this channel. Um, so, yeah, we're going to do one a week. Um, not sure on the date yet. We're still figuring that out. But probably when this gets uploaded. Will probably be the day that we do it per week um so yeah we'll go we'll go along with that so hopefully you guys will enjoy that um yeah i do apologize for our backgrounds as well those will improve as the videos continue and yeah let's just get to the main point so for this video we're going to talk about the film tenet that came out last year back in mm -hmm. 2020 not a very good year i know and mm -hmm. obviously again as the videos progress for the channel oh my cat's going able um <laughs> There he is. <laughs> there, he is. Off. there he is. He's gone evil. He does that all the time. It's fine. That's Pablo, by the way. Meet Pablo Picasso, my cat. Um, yeah, so we're going to talk about Tenet. Not a very good year last year for when it came out. Um, and as the videos progress for the channel, um, we'll be coming off Zoom calls and we'll be going on a more sort of we'll be in person. We'll have mm. the cameras. Yeah, we'll have a bit more of a nice setup. It'll be a bit more of production. With what you see. Um, yeah. From then from now to then, you'll be happy basically mm. so yeah and i know i'm not looking yeah. in the camera either i like i'm looking at myself because you know it, to be again, honest i, I, I can't battle. really tell to be honest, so. they, they've studied media in college university how have they only got this far you know like <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i did university here he only did college because he's a loser but yeah let's get to the basically point anyway. yeah Tenet. so i'm gonna so i'm a passive fan when it comes to this film um, I haven't actually seen it in its entirety, but I've seen pretty much all the trailers and I know the exact premise and plot line of the story. I have seen roughly the first 15 minutes. And you're probably thinking, why am I talking about it then? Well, obviously, it's a conversation more topic. And we've got somebody here who is a, we've got has two extremes here. Film for a while. Yeah. who is a true fan of it as well. And I was a fan of it before fan, it even came discuss. out. And yeah, why well, he's a true fan of it. So let's go on. Unfortunately, Patrick and this is the part where you can fall asleep. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, in three, two, one. Now you can, you know. Let's turn go off to Patrick. Phone. So he's going to be talking about Tenet. Let's um, get a brief outline of what the film is. Then go on, Pat. Explain the synopsis. brief synopsis. So we follow the main character, who apparently you ironically um, think is an ironic name, the protagonist. Played by like lazy writing on the right, <laughs> to be honest. It was like they forgot to name the character. Oh, protagonist, antagonist, side character. <laughs> yeah, go on. Yeah. So <laughs> we've got the protagonist, played by John David Washington. And he is uh, 
well, I, I'm not going to spoil it actually. No, so I'm just going to go on with the main synopsis. Uh, he to is, be fair, it's been out a year, so like you know, some audience it has been. Again, quite... like, there'll be a disclaimer on this to say like you know, obviously the fi- what film we're talking about. Mm-hmm. It will even be in the title of the video as well. I'll if probably have a prime find out what are you well. doing here. We haven't said too much yet. <laughs> Go and watch the film. It's linked link like, below. If you're I, you'll probably YouTube. know more about it than I do as a passive fan. So just go and watch the film. <laughs> all right. Link below, probably. Not that bad. There is. We'll have a link yeah. below for to Prime, where you can yeah. find it. Available on Prime at the moment. Well, not available, available on Pro- Amazon Prime. Prime. Rental you have Prime. Amazon Prime. Rental buy it. Watch it. Obviously, uh, there's a DVD out of it, isn't there? I you know people get, don't yeah. really buy DVDs these days, but you know it's available. Mm. Just, just go get it. Just go watch it. You know, like that's actually quite an interesting synopsis because we will talk about, in my opinion, better films. Very controversial, I know. You can argue if you want, but yeah, right. Let's go. So the synopsis is: uh, protagonist, played by John David Washington, uh, is part of an organization known as Tenet, and he is uh, basically like it's a twist on the Bond franchise and the typical Bond story, like a typical spy film is what no one was trying to do with it and he uh meets a selection of people along the way to help him with his final goal basically of stopping the main antagonist andre sator a russian and well in the net he's an anglo well anglo-russian i think i always said (laughs) anglo-saxon he's an anglo-russian as uh, michael came refers to him in the film and he's basically (laughs) Stop laughing. You can't see him unless he talks, but stop fucking <laughs> laughing, Mr. Card. <laughs> um, so yeah, you he's... get your facts right, mate. You should know it's your favourite film currently. <laughs> yeah, well, favourite in the like we'll... later this year or next year, he'll have another film that he bangs on about as well. In 2017, it was Dunkirk. He played an extra in 1917, by the way, just to say that if as you well. Could, if you, could, if you if watch you can... the scene where they're singing the song um, I'm a Wayfaring can... Stranger, he's one of the soldiers sat by the trees. Even in the train, he's in that trailer shot as well during that scene. You can see him. He's just by a tree, like, looking half dead. I like look you. dead, like, yeah. Fucking makeup. Uh, but yeah, so... Uh, John David Washington plays the protagonist, ironically, his name, and he's tasked with, um, well, he's, I won't spoil it, so he's tasked with um, trying to stop um, Andre Sato, the main um, antagonist, from basically, it's just destroying the world, your typical spy idea, spy, spy plot and narrative of he's just, he wants to, you know, destroy the world, take it in his own hands, and it's his um that's his goal and of course instead of it just being like a bond film where they just have the various gadgets and they've got to you know i don't know like blow up half a uh, casino or something in order to stop him he ends up um it all revolves around the basic hypothetical scientific premise that you can reverse the entropy of an object or a person which basically just means that if you are inverted and you take a if you have a phone or an object, and you put it inside this machine that inverts the object. If you pick it up and then you drop it, you can then hold your hand. Over. But just everything's reversed. I don't know how to explain it properly, but I should be able to consider. I watched it like twenty five thousand times, but that's basically the premise of it: is stopping. It's it's a spy film with time re- reverse. Re- re- I almost said time reversion, time inversion. It's the inverted principles of the mechanics of time. I'm explaining it terribly, aren't I? <laughs> well, I mean, for like, it complicates me. I watched the trailers for it, and I thought, like, this looks insane. This is like the thing, beyond is like... like the Doctor Who's. And I think I read this on uh, probably not the best resource for like looking up research regarding films, but I think I read this on Wikipedia, and I think I read this a few other places as well. Is um, that this film was kind of a slight inspiration or. Um, tip off from like inception that i believe came out in 2009 mm. um was that is that correct 2009 or 10 that when inception came out or was it 2010 yeah, yeah. Um, i well, don't know it, you, i the, think you said to me earlier it was 2010 but i'm pretty convinced it was 2009 the um well, they're probably making it 2009 so <laughs> maybe yeah um but yeah the whole was, point of like, watching bts the course. main com- <laughs> the main comparison between like inception and tenet is that nolan obviously his whole filmography is that 
he took these they're, they're his main two like passion projects inception and tenet inception is my current favorite all-time favorite film may change one day i was really hoping tenet was going to be my favorite but it it just not quite it didn't it didn't surpass inception for me but they're the two like main passion projects for nolan as far as i'm con- as far as i can tell anyway i mean memento is a, a fairly similar one as well although that was mainly his brother's idea because Christopher Nolan also has a brother called Jonathan Nolan. They're like the main writers and producers. And he mainly get like that's how fucking Dark Knight was written by Jonathan Nolan, his brother, making the script and he directs it. In my opinion, some of Christian Nolan's best work. Oh, but yeah, of I mean, obviously, my personal opinion: Inception, then The Dark Knight, right? The Dark Knight trilogy. Uh, what in order though? Christian what do you Nolan, think? Sorry, I think I said his right name wrong. Then because I said it quite <laughs> quickly. Yeah, I'll just say I'll just call him Nolan just in case I make the mistake. We will say yeah. Nolan. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Dark Knight is arguably his best. Like, the, the, it's the best trilogy, in my opinion, anyway. Of like, I mean, but you're a good. you're a franchise guy, anyway. Well, yeah, that's something you'll learn in these videos as yeah. well. Like, he is a he, he is probably a good fan. Like, regarding, um, I say he Pat um, <laughs> stand him. alone and that <laughs> that thing that thing in the corner that gets on my nerves. Um, <laughs> he's good with standalone films, and I get that. A, like a true fan of like media and like films. Would be a fan of like would be a fan and satisfactory with a story that just works as standalone. For me, I'm a bit more spoiled. I like franchises. I like to see the growth, evolution, and expansion of a film series. I mean, I don't mind some individual film films. They're probably not relevant to this chat, so I won't talk about them here. Um, but you know, like standalone only works so well for me. Like I've got a few films that I like about it, but mm, not really. I, I'm more of a franchise guy. Like, I mean, w- regarding this film, because of its like links and slight inspirations from Inception, which also ties to another film I like, and this is where he's smiling because he knows exactly <laughs> what I'm going to say. And you're probably going to be like, it makes more sense for the Inception comparison, but it still gives off this vibe, especially with time like the time travel aspect of it doctor strange true true that well, that, that kind of does work as its own standalone project well obviously it's it's do- all of those all of the like mcu films the ones that are individual like obviously you've technically got the trilogy that is iron man and then you've got the standalone that is doctor strange and you've got what else have you got uh well a new black widow that's come out um is that this meant year? to come out last year well- <laughs> but you've got you have standalone marvel films that to people that like i i do love franchise films as well and we'll get we'll we'll talk about various franchises we'll talk about the mcu the mcu is probably going to cover like more than one or two or three episodes but that's why we're doing this video first get the um, first the worst second the best because the next video will probably be a marvel one just a little foreshadowing um to what comes next (laughs) but yeah, MCU do create some stuff. Although they are obviously part of a franchise, they're expanding on the comics and everything. That's why you've got like Doctor Strange. You've got, um, <laughs> well, yeah, like you said, Doctor Strange. You've got in indiv- all these individual superheroes. I, I know Iron Man was kind of a big one because more of a tri- it was a trilogy, but that's like that. Although they're part of a franchise, you can technically consider them standalone films until they end up making like you've got Ultron, you've got the original Avengers Assemble, and you've got. Infinity War and Game, all of the all the ones that are your favorite, Mister. Because it's all my favorite. <laughs> I love Marvel. I'm just the Marvel guy, and like, well, we'll get into that more in the next video. But mm. yeah, like the link between some of these movies, like when you see like the re- the relation, like Patrick's a big fan of war movies. So yeah, like I've mentioned before already, Dunkirk, 1917, Saving Private Ryan, Hacksaw Ridge. I love some of those films as well. Um but they all have this kind of like same theme. I don't mind films like that, especially other than the obvious. Alone. We just want to say other than the obvious <laughs> as well, like Titanic, you know, like those standalone films for me are just, they work so well, partially because obviously they're based off true events or um, literature version of what's stated by news articles to be true events or depictions by specific people that truthfully were involved in these events. Like, you know, the story between, um, oh, what are their names? What are you trying to think of? Um, Titanic. I can't. This is really bad that I've forgotten their names. Jack and what's the what's the woman's Rose. name? Rose. I thought it was that. I didn't know for sure. Um, like their story, um, it's unclear whether or not it's true or not. But someone put it in terms of what happened in the events of the story, like in the, mm. in that person's perspective, someone who truly was aboard the ship. Um, 
but obviously regarding the the reality behind their presence and that story happening is a mystery. Hmm. Um, but well, they've got to make it. You watch it; it's a true story. It's still encouraging. So I I'm all right with those sorts of films and like films that just work well as a standalone film um, that don't need any extra context to it. But a full on franchise is really it's like, interesting like, actually because. Really it's we. I have the opinion of franchises where I think your opinion of like you you stand from obviously a franchise perspective. Whereas if it works as a standalone film, you like it, but you want to try and evolve it if you can. Whereas in my opinion, if like you can, if you can tell a story within say hour and twenty minutes or two hours and two and a half hours at most, that's like a great piece of just time to just tell a story and then. There are film, well, a Dark Knight trilogy is probably the best instance for me of just like, it's a franchise. Obviously, it's within DCEU, but DCU, whatever. But it's, for me, it's one of those things where sometimes there is an instance where you have a film that can't be told within an hour and a half, two hours, two and a half hours. So it doesn't need to maybe be, you know, three, two hour films or, you know, a selection like, I mean, We'll get onto this in another. It will probably in another entire episode. And we'll yeah, talk I was about just about to say. I feel like we're getting. We feel like. But, I feel like we're getting um off uh, topic a little mm, bit. But like, um, I mean, Fast and Furious. Well, originally me. our channel was going to be called Film Ramble, but I think we realised that that was taken. So, <laughs> welcome to Fortune Theory. <laughs> so I, yeah, I, I prefer it to be honest. Yeah, I think I think it's, it's a good more name. individual. It's a good name. It, it'll grow on people if they don't like it. They might think, why is it called that? Um, but um, for us, it was a name that had like quite big significance that I feel like is a bit difficult to explain, and would probably take more of the video's time than you clicked on here for. So um, <laughs> we'll talk about that in another video if you really want to know. Um, but this video is mainly just like everything we are and what we're doing, and but trying, yeah, trying to fall back into the main topic. I think Nolan's mm. not really obviously he did the Dark Knight trilogy, but I don't think he's a big franchise. Oh, he's not. No, he's no. not for franchises. Um, no, he's definitely like a standalone. Like, because obviously you got Tenet. I don't picture like <laughs> Tenet and it, <laughs> basically Tenet two coming out anytime <laughs> soon. Like, you know, he might do, but like, what would you even do with that? Um, so obviously, that's one of the reasons that I. We're I well, like I, I do see with, how you could make a second. Out. You could make a second film out of Tenet to sort of so almost complete the loop. Um. Obviously, what because I only saw like the beginning bit. I didn't really see how it ended. No, so no. like without really giving away too much spoilers, like how did that film? I mean, it end and how I will be honest. That the first movie. time I watched it, I left the cinema thinking, uh, I well, the first sort of two minutes as the as the credits rolled, I'm like, oh, okay, that was the end. That's interesting. And then it for me it was one of those films unlike Inception the first time I watched Inception I'm like holy crap what the hell what the, what just happened, and then Tenet annoyingly I was hoping for the ending to be again please I'm trying to not spoil it so please watch it link below buy it or rent it on Prime or buy the DVD links below anyway if you're watching this on YouTube, but the I came out the first time thinking it felt a bit um, it didn't feel incomplete but it felt like it was the halfway point but it had already told the story which is kind of a weird feeling because you feel like you're halfway through you feel like you still got about 45 minutes left but they're like you did know everything you knew what happened you knew like the consequences of everything which... kind of like the way um and i don't know if you've seen this film or not but in again like based off the fiction aspect of it it does again and i've just realized this actually thinking about it <laughs> it does bear a few similarities um, the Divergent series, the um, the the adaption of oh, the third yeah. film, Allegiant, yeah. that obviously ended with the intention of making a sequel that um, never came out due to box office, and they thought, oh, we're going to make the fourth one, which they're going to retitle Ascendant, basically mm. a TV movie, and Shane Lee Woodley wouldn't come back, and then they were going to make a spin-off anyway, but it just no nothing ever happened from it. So I hope we yeah. get a good reboot from that because you know well, I was looking forward to that, but the ending of that film again. You should have seen it by now. Um, <laughs> yeah, they they pretty much like you know fight off. Um, oh, I can't remember his name now. Dave David's like sort of faction of people from outside the city, um, as well as obviously people that are fighting against themselves in the city, including Thor's mother, 
Um, not four as in Mighty Thor, he's not in it. Um, four, <laughs> four as in the main character that literally called for, you know, well, one, two, three taken. That's a joke from the first book. Um, so they stop the civil war that's happening and they're pretty much got their town secured and the memories are all kept. Like no one's really like with bad significance has lost their memory. The Miles Teller character runs off because he's like Dave's student pet. But Dave gives no shit about him, so yeah, sorry, language. Um, and it just sort of ends, and you know, like it felt like a, sto- a complete story, but you knew it wasn't the whole book because um, the way they sort of played out one of the big middle action scenes, and then it ends with them like looking o- looking over their city on the outwards part, and then there's a hologram of Dave being the big villain played by Jeff Daniels, like just looking at Trish through this hologram. She doesn't realize this. And you can tell, like, this is a setup to, like, the fourth one. You know, like, this mm. is what's going to happen next. But we never saw that. That was never paid off. But, again, like many films that have good, like, ending cliffhangers and have that kind of aspect to it, it's like, it feels like a whole film, but then it ends and it's like, you can tell this is, like, the beginning of something that's meant to, like, happen next. You can't just leave it. So I'm guessing by the sounds of that, yeah, it, it makes it, it from a it's franchise point of view. In that respect, I feel like I've kind of compared it to anything now, but I feel mm. like that was a good. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of directors and storytellers that like they they there are a lot of directors that I, I guess might hate franchises or not really fond of franchises. So they make one film and they actually don't really. There's a lot of directors that just want to make a cliffhanger or want to make a story that doesn't have just a closed ending and wants to be like true like just almost every film they make has an open ending it's knowing the Um, difference between making a franchise for the purpose of actually falling in love with the franchise and the characters mm -hmm. and knowing that people want more or doing it to milk it for the money that's the thing and again that's where we have mixed opinions we'll get into that in future videos because that's again a quite a controversial topic but But i think that like tenet it could become I don't it could become maybe a set they could make a second film off it if they wanted to and it would probably do quite well but it's whether or not Nolan I don't think Nolan would do it himself it would be like yeah Tenet, Tenet, I Tenet, feel Tenet. like that is that is kind of they they won't call it Tenet too like there's barely any films that you see these days that have the numbers um, nah. in their sequels it's always subtitled now which used to annoy me a lot as a kid growing up because I, again, like I'd still, I love franchises then as much as I do now. But back then, I was a bit of a dweeb due to lack of intelligence. So my mindset would be, you know, which story is this? Is this the second one? Is it the fourth one? Is it the, you know, is it the sixth one? Which one mm. is it in the series? Like, because there's so many. Like Harry Potter, God, that blew my that blew my mind and so I worked it out like but to be fair I was lucky with that one because I didn't really get into it properly until like after the films had come out because no. my mind was set on other franchises that I liked as well and like, I didn't really get into it until then I was blown away with how good it was but I could tell like it's not a title kind of sequence that I like because I just can't figure out which is which but now I adore it like the same way you adore the number sequeling so mm. it'll be like and it has to make sense to the title of the film as well. So obviously Tenet was like, it made even sense to the nature of the film as well. Like they were, they went that far with it to make sure that the title made just as much as sense as the concept behind the, mm. the fiction aspect. And the whole the point of like palindromic wording and stuff. Yeah. Like, mm. you know, Inception doesn't really tell you what it's about, if that makes sense. It does a little bit, but it does, it just, you know, that it could mean mean more than just what that film was same with um like dr strange as well like you know it it gives you a hint like a tinge of it and it doesn't spoil it which is good in that sense but you know and i think that's the only thing i feel half and half about with tenet is just like the title it, it kind of it did that but it didn't <laughs> it would be funny if films were just like called she dies in the end <laughs> <laughs> but i mean yeah it was but where's gamora <laughs> for infinity war <laughs> spoiler but again it's been out for like almost three years so if a film has been out for more than like a well uh, we'll make exception i I personally think we should make exceptions in the last year because of covid anything Um, any film that's been born as in released less than a year before mm. the making of this video we will not spoil for the Mm. purpose of get off your ass and watch it basically (laughs) and for the fact that you can literally just buy and rent on prime and most things are on netflix now anyway you can watch yeah um, like technically in a well we speak for people in the uk because i won't obviously address where we live but we live in the uk as in country wise 
So, and you can probably tell by our accents anyway. Um, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's available on Amazon Prime. You can still buy DVDs in your local Tesco's and all of your essential shops. If you're, a, you, Ameri- yeah, if you're, you're in, if you're in, if you're in the state, you're you've got Target, you've got what Walmart. Else are you do? Just mm. the films that we talk about. Just buy them if you don't have them. Go on Netflix, Amazon Prime. Um, I do, do, do we get HBO Max here? Uh, it's well, annoyingly, it's advertised, but again, like one day, if we ever have it, you need a VPN. I don't know why I'm asking you now when we're doing the video, but I was gonna ask you anyway. (laughs) You need a VPN, and if if Express VPN, if you see this and want to sponsor us so that people in the UK can watch HBO Max in the UK because it's country specific, I know some people will find this controversial as well, but I do want to watch the Schneider Cut from Justice League. Um, but I feel arguably like I do too is HBO Max and I was like well how can I watch it then because the cinema yeah. we need a we need a VPN to watch it and I won't get the like... cinema experience either like again with Tenet it's a cinema experience yeah. film as well it, it and that was the one. trouble like, and it's I know where... I can't really say much as a passive fan but I can tell just by certain films that which are definitely made purposely to be a cinema film and I think this one is like I'm a passive fan because there's only parts of it that I kind of like, like the concept of the time travel and the back and forth and, you know, like the whole you die and then the world gets basically rewritten when you die with with you, which is basically the issue with Andre's antagonist. Um, I, I can't take the protagonist's name. <laughs> you know, like that's as much as shit as I see this film compared to the ones I actually do like, but yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm trying not to talk too much specifically about it because it, not only spoilers, but also he just knows better. But yeah, he'll be like this when I talk about my stuff. And honestly, they won't, there'll be videos to wake you up. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> well, that's the thing because there'll be some episodes that we're like, there's probably going to be more franchise episodes, to be honest, because there are more franchises. You know, there are more franchises that involve standalone films than there are standalone films that have been evolved and that have been made into franchises, I think. Just for some examples, and again, we'll get into some of these in our later videos. So you've got Pirates of the Caribbean, which I was literally just watching a marathon of, and I just finished this afternoon. Um, I've been watching over the last couple of weeks. (sighs) So the fourth one, it really annoyed me when I watched it, and I think it wasn't really many fans' favourites, but... I found out it was a standalone sequel to the original trilogy with only a few minor references to make it canon. And it wasn't really until the fifth film that that film ended up becoming canon to um, not only the whole, fran- the whole franchise, but also it reflected back to the original three. But the fourth film was definitely, if that was just left alone as it was, it would have definitely been the standalone sequel. I think in some ways Toy Story 4 is like that as well. And, I got that um, sense with it. Yeah. But probably one of the best examples that I can think of is Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift because until they released the newer sequels later it was definitely um, a standalone sequel to the original two because not only is there a massive when you catch up with the franchise it's not only a massive time jump um, and also like the complete irrelevance to the previous two films in its cast minus the cameo from Vin Diesel at the end and if you count um, Sun Kung's Han Lu who also appeared in Better Luck Tomorrow which Justin Lin says is canon Again, we'll get into that in another video. It's just a standalone movie to that franchise and basically to any of the director's projects as well. So, yeah. Indeed. Some franchises can work with standalone films. And again, I don't have a problem with that because it's connected to the franchise in Mm. some way, shape or form. It's in that universe. It's set in that world. Like the MCU does it. All these, like, you know, they've just brought out WandaVision. Like, if you haven't seen the, like, you don't, need to see the original avengers movie to understand that is true i mean i i like because the characters aren't in it obviously jarvis is uh, tony stark's like ai but that could be paul bettany just playing like the character he plays in star wars don't need to see that to understand wandavision just so you know who the actor is Mm. like you don't you don't need that it's a different character it's not relevant yet like it I mean, yeah, works. anyone like, anyone could watch one in a franchise. It's standalone. Like, I I mean, I have it's seen so. most of the Avengers, most of the Marvel films, and Reluctant. from an outside from an outside perspective, you could easily see what one division stand like by itself as a is as its own like mini series. Well, not even mini series. It's going to be nine episodes, isn't it? Um, yeah, and um, from what I've heard, just to say, and again, I know this video is not really about it, but because it's the introductory, and I'm just excited, and it's a topic I like. Um, episode seven, I think from nine, will actually be an hour-long episodes. 
Here we as go. well. So we'll Here have we more fun. to look forward to next. Mm. Um, and we'll probably have an episode on One Division as well when like the last episode comes out. Maybe after or episode nine, I found this out last night as well. Um, Marvel's bringing out another TV show called Assembled, which is basically um, it will come out the week um, to when we would be getting a tenth episode, which was rumored originally. Um, but it's mm-hmm. actually not a tenth episode. It's um, Mar- It's a new series from Marvel, which starts with the first episode being Marvel's Assembled. It's like Marvel Legends, only like break the fourth wall, because it's like basically BTS of how the show was made with all yeah. the interviews yeah. and stuff like that, which you might think is, well, this is just a featurette. But obviously, it's not easy for a TV show to have a good featurette unless it's like a movie franchise, which can have one per film and they can have loads of videos. And it's all just the bonus features you get on the DVDs and obviously now Disney+. Plus with and other streaming services i expect with all like the you know play films subtitles extras all that sort of stuff like you know dvds and all disc like related copies are just becoming more and more redundant by the minute but mm, i still love it don't get rid of yeah i just love it having a disc i just love having a blu-ray or a dvd for the sake of having like a physical because if one day like for some reason if the internet just fucked off or if electricity just decided to bugger off everyone's prime account netflix and well, like now tv dark ages basically. yeah and unless you have like a portable dvd player or a, if you have like solar which just power. so happens to still work in a plug socket when charging it so it can at least work as well as the <laughs> dvds obviously themselves getting signal etc blah 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 that's the thing just you having know, like despite physical, the dark ages just a physical yeah. data on a, on a disc is what i i just is why i still have like my favorite i still get my favorite films on on Blu-ray and DVD when I can. And then obviously for the sake of ease of access, and it's typically late, everyone does this, but it's very lazy. I could just, you know, get a console and put a Blu-ray in it, but I decided to, just, you know, download it on Prime or whatever. But it's um, it's the world we live in. So it's Indeed. ease of access. But And like, again, making sure that we're still talking about 10 at the main <laughs> film of the video. I don't, again, like going back to the point of it being like a cinema film, like for DVD, obviously, yes, you can buy it on DVD. Unless you're like watching it on a big projector, you're not really for like for the first time. You're not really going to get that cinema experience. Like obviously, it's if it's a film you've anticipated for a while, and you're like, yes, I want to watch this. Like this is like your early man when you're like a fan of Arden films and you know what the animation's like. So each film is almost like a sequel to itself, even though it's like no relevance. I don't mind that. I love Arden and standalone films like Flushed Away. That's probably my favorite standalone film of all time. (laughs) Flushed Away. I know I didn't really want to say it because it felt just completely irrelevant. But was, yeah, I remember watching that for the first time. Oh, what a film! But um, you could make a fool of the toad. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> <What> the, <laughs> the um, yeah, the thing I think if I was going to give my like the the optimal viewing experience for Tenet, if you cannot see it in a cinema in any way, if you if, like even when it's not out in the cinemas anymore, if you can't go to like a private local theater and you know take a blu-ray with you the least you can do is like get the blu-ray if you can or get it on download it on prime buy it on buy or rent it on prime whatever you can do personally and just... get the best flat screen tv mm-hmm. you can get you just want to turn bring out, the cinema turn experience out all the lights home. close the blinds so there's no or curtains or whatever so there's no like light flash from outside lights or just glare from shadows and reflections and windows and whatnot like you know tell your family members to go to bed or you know don't make noise or watch it with you <laughs> or just watch it with you and remain silent shove dummies in their mouths to keep them quiet <laughs> and just so you get the full silent experience but basically yeah just watch and, Tenet if you well, have silent seen it. experience not saying that because the film's not a silent film but you know what i mean like it's the opposite of a silent film, film. Like that's one of the issues with it get a projector so you can mm. actually have it full screen if you don't want the flat screen. But make sure, like, if you were to get, like, say, the DVD copy or download it or just watch it on, like, say, Sky Cinema or whatever, like, if you were to get the DVD, get, like, the 4K Ultra HD version because then you'll have, like, the full decent quality. Patrick might be a bit controversial about that in terms of his reaction. I mean, um, no, for, if, obviously, you have to have a, you know, like, if you have, like... a Xbox Obviously, the, the DVD player that t- is compatible with. You have to get a compatible well. if you yeah, want. You like, can get it all please on watch it in 4K if you have a 4K it. TV really and a 4K Blu-ray it. player, or a 4K. If you have a Xbox One, like Xbox Series X, or the 4K compatible Xbox, or a 4K Blu-ray, you can watch it in 4K. But otherwise, to be honest, they're probably not going to notice the average difference. But uh, just watch it in the best, in like the best possible viewing experience on the biggest screen you can. Even like just whatever. Do not watch it. 
phone or an iPad or a laptop if you can help it. <laughs> but uh, if you really can't watch it on TV, just watch it anyway. You've got to watch it. <laughs> it's one of those films regardless. But yeah, watch it on the biggest screen. That's, otherwise, we've just wasted our time for God knows how long. Promoting the bloody it. film. Like, <laughs> You know, I suppose for the fact that I haven't really watched it compared to somebody who has, it gives you a good insight in the sense of like what it's roughly about. And obviously, like, you know, gives you inspiration to watch it or to not watch it because of the fact that we have or haven't in a way. Um, Mm. You know, and obviously you've learned a lot, a a little bit roughly about it now. So like, yeah, feel free to go away and watch it. But technically you should have watched it before you came on. Yeah. I mean, if you haven't, if you didn't, I, we do understand that I was waiting for it since the first trailer and since I heard that Nolan was making a new film and the moment I hear no news of Nolan making a new film I just want to find out what it is and then when I obviously Covid just destroyed the cinema and everything in the Actually, world reaction to wanting a pop tart <sighs> <laughs> but it's just yeah I, I did go to the cinema when we were allowed to in the UK in between lockdowns in like September it was August no the end of August it was August 26th that's when it came out I remember the exact day and um, <laughs> yeah, just remember the exact day. But if like if you didn't get the chance to see it in cinema, it's just it's on Prime. It is it you, free to watch on Prime, or do you have to pay for it? It is. It's, I shouldn't actually say it's on Prime Video. It's not available on Amazon Prime. If you have, you still need to buy or rent it. Unfortunately, but it's so much. It's worth the like five quid if you rent it for the two hours, and then you've got like a month to finish it off if you don't watch it in time. But it's worth the fiver, and it's worth the tenner if you buy it, and it's worth the thirty quid if you get the four K Blu Ray. Whatever, but it is, it's worth it. It's worth the watch for sure. I tell and... you what, though, that's not what I'm going to do because again, I'm a passive fan. <laughs> it's it's um, it can be complex, and that's why it's why it's a controversial thing. If we ever do talk about it again in more detail, but I would say just from like talking to more people other than Patrick about the film. It's definitely a film you watch more than once to understand. As with it. a lot you of Nolan films, films. You watch it the first... Yeah, pretty much. Like, well, with the Batman ones, it's like you could just watch it once, but then, like, yeah. you want to watch it again because it's actually good, let alone yeah. just needing to understand more about Most it. Most of his passion projects... Not saying that his other films aren't good because they <laughs> are. Um, minus a few. Um, it's just... It's, this one in particular is the definition of needing to watch more than once in order oh, yeah. to understand it. And just the whole like concept required me it, to like, and you just want the full experience. Just I didn't it. understand the full concept of the film until the final trailer. No, the second trailer. I remember they explained in the trailer that like the obviously the, the they ex, they show a bit of the story that explains the concept, and I was just what the, just it, it it was crazy to me. But um, yeah, it's one of those multi layered films that even after the fifth watch, I just you I still. I'm immersed into it, even on the ninth, on the twenty fifth view. It's just one of those films for me, but yeah, it's interesting to see. Like, if, I know you haven't seen it yet, Ollie, but it's interesting to see like an outsider. Well, like, I've seen like franchise. the first. I saw like the opening part mm. where you know where he's like. I, I feel like I can't spoil it now. Like, when did you say the release date was again? August last year, twenty sixth. In the UK, anyway. The- the main character takes a certain item to basically escape from an opera, scene, an opera, yeah. uh, an opera, a Russian opera. Scene. I've pretty much given it away now, but you, yeah, I think you, really. you can like watch this bit on YouTube. So yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like you know, all we'll, we'll link you YouTube. the um, like. There's always like the a opening. first ten, five to ten to fifteen minutes released on YouTube for pretty much a random variety of films, and this one probably included as well. So. You know, because it's, it's mainly like a trailer bump. Nodan loves to have a prologue for his films, so he basically uploads every single prologue, like almost as like its own entity. And this was the main prologue for Tenet, and it was is nuts. It was I think it the prologue was before the Rise of Skywalker when that was out in IMAX last year as well. Another film I started watching, and another film we'll talk about in later videos, film mm-hmm. franchise in fact. But yeah, that just gives you an idea anyway. Anyway, I think we're about to run out of time. Because we're doing a Zoom call, but it might be limitless anyway, but we need to wrap this up some way, otherwise you are going to get bored and fall asleep. And I don't <laughs> want you to feel like that towards me, I just want you to feel like that towards him. We'll get the boring films out of the way, we'll talk about the decent Marvel F and F, as in Fast and Furious, not the clothes brand at Tesco's um, film franchise, and um, Grown Ups, and just basically all other films, random 
here we go, there and there. So, yeah, Indeed. as of now, as of this moment, I'm Oliver, this is Patrick, and we hey. are Fortune Theory. Thanks Thank for you watching. for tuning into our first video. If you like what you see, please feel free to like, subscribe, send and share away on Facebook, social medias, to your friends. Basically, get this channel activated and growing. Obviously, we don't have much content yet. We've just got this video, but we'll have more coming in every week from the release date of this video. So we're going to have a huge panic attack after we end this video because we are then going to have to figure out when this is coming out and what we're doing <laughs> next. But I think we've pretty much given you an idea of what the next video is. It's going to be Marvel related. Something is to it? wake you up. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you very much. See you later. See you guys.